So I want to build up one of the workhorse concepts in intermediate macroeconomics, which is the IS curve, which is a short form of saying the uh, investment savings curve where savings equal investment. Now I'll talk about some of the national income accounting uh, issues in, in just a bit, but as will be made clear, the underlying concept here is looking at a goods market equilibrium. And the version that I'm going to be talking about here is a closed economy version where we don't have to worry about exports and imports of goods and services. So it's, you'll see that some of the, the concepts are quite similar when you add in the open economy part, but it, uh, we're going to keep that off to the side uh, for now. So first, uh, let's uh, talk about this investment savings relationship and how that relates to this goods market, goods market equilibrium. So we have the right hand side is expenditure by consumers, by businesses, or, and the government. I, sh I say businesses because to be careful about that because investment also would include uh, housing by uh, purchases by consumers. But this is expenditures on the right hand side. It's a kind of uh, measure of the aggregate demand of goods and services in the economy. The left hand side is the supply of goods and services by the, by the economy. So we're going to be doing this at first uh, holding overall prices constant. The sort of standard IS story begins with holding prices constant. You, that can be adjusted, but let's let's do that for the for the moment. And let me take this goods market equilibrium and rewrite it a little bit. So we can rewrite that relationship over there on the right. as the following. We've got essentially national income minus consumer spending on goods and services minus government spending on goods and services on the left hand side equal to investment. Now another way of writing that, let me actually do it over, over here, is where savings equal to investment. If you take national income and you take away current consumption by uh, the private sector for, for current goods, and you subtract off government expenditures on goods and services for the current period, what you're left with is savings. National savings. S. Now, let's think about the IS curve. The IS curve is combinations of interest rates and GDP such that the goods market is in equilibrium. I.e. where this holds. That's all it is. We're going to draw the IS curve using this relation, this definition, or why is the, I do that a little bit, a little bit better. We've got GDP on this axis. We've got interest rate on this axis. 
And we're trying to think about combinations of these two things such that that goods market clears. And I want to pull out one combination. Now I'm pulling this out of the air. I'm just saying there's an interest rate such that the that condition holds and a national income that also is consistent with that. Let's suppose that the interest rate falls. Now how does that affect things over there? How does it affect the demand for goods and services? Lower interest rates means it's going to be cheaper to borrow. Consumers want to buy more housing, more cars. Firms want to expand businesses. This level of national income will be insufficient to meet that aggregate demand. If the interest rates fall, we're going to have some new level of national income. You got to have higher national income at lower interest rates because people are going to want to are going to want to borrow more. And if you do that for all the different possible combinations of output and interest rates, you get a downward sloping IS curve. Now, there are generations of students who have tended to look at that and say, well, okay, the IS curve, it's the goods market, so the interest rate's going down. It's kind of like a price, or they'll put price over on the left-hand side. It's not a price, okay? These these are equilibrium conditions. These are interest rates and output that, that have that condition holding. Okay? Yes, it slopes downward. Yes, so does a demand curve. That doesn't mean that they're the same thing. It's, you don't have price over on this axis. You've got the interest rates. Now, what will shift the IS curve. Okay, as we start to look at macroeconomic policy in this framework, we need to know what shifts the curves. Very always important. Because it's 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 usually the kind of the, the point of departure for the analysis. You know what 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 starts to change. Well here's some examples. One changes in government spending. So let's think about what happens if there is an increase in government spending by decision of the Congress. And let's do this by thinking about for example, this, this combination at point A. Now, to start with, that's on an IS curve. Everything's fine. It's supply and demand for, for goods and services in, in sync. And now you have higher government spending. that is going to result in some shift to the right of the IS curve. If there's more demand by the government for goods and services, the economy better produce more in order for the goods market to be in equilibrium. For any given level of the interest rate, you would have higher 
GDP associated with goods market equilibrium because you've got this new demand coming from the govern government spending. So a, a, a government stimulus program through, through government spending will shift the IS curve to the right. Again, I, it's just, just tempting to think about that as a, a shift in the aggregate demand curve. That's not what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's different combinations of interest rate and output uh, will uh, give you that goods market equilibrium. In fact, so let's think about this. With the new government spending to the right, and you've got point A, well, there's excess demand for goods and services at, uh, at this point, because you've got the government uh, spending increasing. Either your output will have to go up, okay, shifting the IS curve to the right. If for some reason your output can't change, to choke off that aggregate demand, you could have, at the same level of output, you could have instead higher interest rates. That's another way to do it. But either way, either saying that the IS curve shifts out because output has to uh, rise to meet the new aggregate demand, or you could say interest rate at any given level of output, interest rates have to rise to choke off the demand. You know, either way, that curve shifts to the right. changes in taxes. Very similar to government spending. An increase or a decrease in taxes basically has the same sort of dynamic as an increase in government spending. It's a fiscal stimulus, shifts the, the IS curve out because at, again, starting out at point A, if you have a decrease in, ta in taxes, either your level of output has to change to catch up with that increase in demand because of the uh, drop in the tax burden, shifting out to point B, or if your output can't change, interest rates go up, choking off the, uh, the demand that way. Either way you think about it, changes in taxes, a decrease in tax, tax um, shifts the IS curve to the right. An increase in taxes will shift the IS curve backwards. So a contractionary policy, just the opposite um, in, um, in effect. So what else might change the IS curve. What else might affect the um, um, well changes in consumer sentiment? If I'm suddenly very optimistic about the future as a consumer and I want to spend more that will increase aggregate demand and either aggregate demand has to increase or to choke off my demand interest rates go shifts to the right now when you bring in this is a little bit ahead of the game here but changes in foreign demand for domestic goods will also affect the IS curve. Again, we've not really introduced the international aspects of this, but I think it, it should be uh, pretty straightforward to imagine this, that if foreigners want to buy more of, of our goods for some reason, that's going to increase aggregate demand and have this same sort of dynamic. But again, I, I, I really I want to emphasize, don't think of this as, you know, the aggregate demand curve. Okay, we've, we've got a different setup for that, where we have price level, aggregate demand on the, 
or um, yeah, aggregate, aggregate demand measure with price and, and, and output. No prices over here. But the changes in the in, increase in aggregate demand will have these changes in the IS curve as described here. Okay? So again, one of the basic workhorses of, of intermediate macroeconomics.